So now let's have a look at um, browsing for files. I want to write a little script that imports a text file from a directory and stores all the contents in my script. So I'm going to use nuke.getFileName to give, my, give myself a predefined browser. And actually let's run the help command on that first to see all its options. You see it has a whole bunch of options here, the arguments that are all explained in this list here. We're just going to use the first three. So we're going to use the message, the pattern, and the default value. So these three guys here. So first I'm going to def define a default directory where all the daily data lives for me. And that is stored in users, frank dailies. And make sure to terminate this path with a slash so the file browser actually goes inside of that directory rather than just selecting it. And now we will open the actual file browser. And that is nuke.getFileName. The first argument being the message. So we'll just type a uh, get dailies notes. The second is the pattern. And in my case, I know it's always going to be a txt file or an XML file. So I'll just go space wildcard.xml. And the third argument will be my default directory, like so. So now if I run this command, I get my file browser defaulting to my dailies directory. And now I can select that text file. And let's just bring that back and examine our file path variable now. And that now holds the OS path to that file. So now we can go ahead and work with that. First, once again, we'll make sure the user didn't hit cancel. And then we'll just open that file and read its content. So we'll go file equals open file path. And I'm only going to open it for reading so we can't mess it up accidentally. And once we've got the file handler, we will read its content, like so. And lastly, we will close the whole thing again. So that should give us the content of the text file we got through the file browser. And now we're pretty much ready to stuff that into a sticky note. But because labels in Nuke actually support HTML syntax, let's just have a bit of fun with that as well and create a little HTML entry here and point that to an image on disk. So I'll create an HTML label and that points to an image on disk and that again lives in users frank dailies slash dailies dot png and then I'll close the HTML tag and the string quote and now I, I'm ready to uh, create a sticky note like so And the label will be my HTML string, followed by a line break, followed by the content of the file that we got through the file browser, without typos like so. And while we're at it, we might as well increase the note font size a little bit to make it more readable. I'll just bump that up to 20. Now executing this code will give me my file browser. I can select a text or XML file and the contents of that will be stuffed into a uh, sticky note that now lives with my script and can be saved there. So now we can go ahead and change stuff according to our feedback. There's two more methods that I quickly want to mention to you. One is nuke.getClipName, which is pretty much the same as nuke.getFileName, except it'll let you browse for image sequences rather than just single files. And uh, the other one is nuke.getFrames and views. That one is important if you want to do any sort of frame processing over range. You can get a frame range from the user using that. So that's nuke.getFrames and views. And if you execute that, it needs a title first. I'll just call it get range. And uh, you can assign a default as well, like 1 to 10, for example. 
and running that will give you a uh, frame range browser. Now if you have a stereo setup, this same command will actually also let you choose which views you want to process. And you, here you have the choice of one of them or both. And if you wanted to do this an exclusive pick, you could use the optional argument and bump that up to one. And if you run that, then you get buttons instead of a list and they're mutually exclusive. So depending on what you want to do with this frame range and the, the views that are requested, you can choose one or the other. And you can see this will return a list where the first item is the frame range and the second item is the list of views that are supposed to be processed.